G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and in this Let's Draw video we're going to be drawing the Incredible Hulk. Now we start off as we always do with our construction lines and creating a bit of a silhouette and uh, really roughing out the shape of what we want the end picture to be. Now there are a few things I keep in mind when drawing someone like the Hulk with really disproportionate anatomy, with really kind of, uh, you know, over the top muscle structure. Uh, and that is, frankly, that silhouette is the be-all and end-all. If you really want to accentuate masculinity and uh, muscles and, and anatomy, the best way to do that is through the pose and through having the right things emphasised. So in this, in this example, in this picture, I'm going to be having him ripping out, stretching out his arms and his torso in a very dramatic way and uh, becoming the Hulk. I'm unleashing as it were. So this is where his rib cage is. Of course I'm doing the construction lines in green because it's the Hulk. And uh, and I'm really going to muck around with the proportions. So obviously I have a larger upper chest, large shoulders going in from there and the biceps here. And I'm going to have his fists here and have them quite large. You can see his fist is actually almost as large as uh, his chest, which in reality is not possible. But because of the foreshortening, it's bigger, and because of the fact that we're really warping the proportions. So I'm going to just pop the shoulder up more and really accentuate the shape. Another thing that you can do to really make it uh, look like he's kind of popping with size, with the uh, you know, they were like his muscles are bursting out when he's doing this, this tearing out pose, is uh, really overdoing the blockiness of the shape. So rather than just having rounded, you know, if someone has like a muscle thing, we don't just go with a round edge. With something like this, we can really overdo the style to bring that out. So the head's going to be there. The legs are going to be in something of an outstretched pose. So I'm going to have his Legs. Now, Hulk doesn't skip leg day, but to aid in the over-the-top look that we're going for here, we're just going to um, we're going to have his legs smaller and taper in. So once we've got the basic blocking in, which is what I think we've got here, I think I'm fairly happy with the overall proportions. I'm just going to go through and add the details with my mechanical pencil. It's nothing too fancy, just an old mechanical pencil. Uh, and I'm just going to start refining the anatomy uh, and some of the details. And then I'm going to talk about the process after we've reached the end of that. So I've got my sketch to the point now where I'm quite happy with it and there are a few things that I've kept in mind. Like I said before, rather than having very round sort of anatomy, I've kind of squared things off, especially like in the shoulders, uh, in the chest and uh, like on the edge here and then in the hands, forearms, things like that and in the, the legs. And um, the reason is, first of all, it's kind of uh, adds to the style, it adds to a feeling of solidity, uh, a harder um, edge and a more squared off edge is a little more hard hitting than a, a soft edge and so because it's very silhouette oriented we can really accentuate the masculinity of it by bringing that out. Um, the other thing too is uh, having a sense of motions by having for instance cloth kind of coming out here and I could for instance add some more cloth kind of being torn off 
as his ripped his shirt off because he's too big. All right. So that can kind of add a sense of motion. Uh, overall, I'm quite happy with it. Now we're going to get to the more detailed part, which is going through the line work. And uh, I'm also going to be specifying areas where I want there to be shade. And so I'm going to start off by doing that now. And I'm going to have very down sort of lighting. Uh, and in doing that, I'm going to be darkening areas like in here, uh, under here quite a bit. Uh, now we'll get to that bit a bit later, but I just wanted to kind of uh, let you know that I'm going to be doing that uh, and that will help emphasize the shape. But otherwise for now I'm going to be focusing on the lines and uh, trying to get as much detail in as I can. So now that I've done the basic line work to this piece, I'm going to add a few extra details. Things like uh, veins along the muscles to really accentuate that over the top, uh, bursting with masculine hulkish energy that the hulk has. So usually along the shoulder and bicep are a good place to do that. Uh, sometimes along the chest or in the legs, but mostly up in the upper arms uh, or in the... Um, forearms is a really good place to do it too. Then after I do that, I'm going to start uh, going about the shading and adding an edge. So I'm just going to go with the veins first and I won't fast forward through this process. I'll just kind of talk you through how I do it. First of all, I have a general direction that I go in, right? So I'm following one sort of tree, if you know what I mean. And then now and then I branch out like that. So when I'm drawing the veins, you follow generally one direction, well, don't follow one direction, that's what makes you beautiful. That was a terrible joke, I'm really sorry. Um, but yeah, you, you generally have a direction that you go in, and then every now and then you can kind of deviate. Uh, there, there are general things to keep in mind with veins, but there isn't an exact way to draw them. Everyone's veins are sort of different. So um, I think in general, if you just try and keep that sort of webbed uh, tree-like look. Keep it really sporadic and thin in the lines, not too over the top. And you end up with something that somewhat represents veins, which is, I guess, what you want. Okay, so I've got the basic vein look that I was going for here. Quite happy with the result. And the next thing I'm gonna do is start doing some shading and the outline. So two things in particular. Uh, the first thing is in these darker areas that I've sort of outlined before, I'm gonna start adding thick black shading. Uh, I'm gonna do that by doing outlines with a thicker marker and then I'll go over the inside of that with a Sharpie. That way I can maintain the detail of the edges and then the inside will be a solid black without wasting too much ink from my 0 0.5. Then after that, I'm gonna go around the edges, uh, which I will do with a mix of the 0 0.5 and the Sharpie uh, and have some areas that are really quite heavily silhouetted. For example, I would do so in the shoulders and the upper chest, uh, whereas other areas I'll kind of thin it out a bit and try and keep it as stylistic as possible. Possible.
So as you can see, I've got a majority of the image done and I'm quite happy with the result. Now I'm not totally finished. There are just some really minor finishing touches that I'm going to add. Now, uh, first of all, I just want to do a bit of a bit of a general cleanup. I don't like to erase all of my construction lines. I actually think that construction lines in an image like this uh, tend to add a bit of flavor, but there are some areas where it's a bit cluttered or it's a, it goes out a little too far where I'm just going to go through and clean up a bit. Also, generally, the paper has become a bit grimy <laughs> because my uh, finger, as you can see, gathers the lead as I run my hand across and do the shading and things like that. So what I just did, <sighs> excuse me, uh, in doing the black is uh, it seems like uh, a quite a complicated process. It does take a little bit of um, an instinct, I guess you could say, in terms of where the shadows go. So, so, you know, you need to know where your light source is and I knew mine was coming from the top. But basically I outlined um, the areas that the light would not fall and then I just colored them in with the thick black. And as you can see, it really creates a, a nice sort of comic-esque look about the piece. Now that I've finished doing that, there are only two things I want to do to uh, finalize the piece. The first is uh, add a little bit of distance in these further limbs. So this leg over here and this arm here on the right, I'm just going to get a fine liner and I'm going to do this. Just do some lines, really thin lines. And then thin them out a little bit so they're not as strong towards the end. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here with the leg. And I, they will get thinner towards the bottom but then towards the top I'll have them thicker and closer together. Now the reason I'm doing this is uh, first of all it makes them a bit darker and in doing that it kind of adds to the atmosphere and pushes them away from the viewers sight. Okay so it just kind of adds to that sense of drama and foreshortening. Okay now the other thing I'm going to do is get my finest fine liner which is the point one I'm just going to go over some of the cloth areas and do the same thing on the bits of cloth that are closest to the body and that just shows that they're behind the body and uh, and it gives a bit more of a uh, bit more of priority to the Hulk and his figure <clears throat> so uh, other than that as you can see I've gone through and added outlines edges and made them a bit stronger things like that uh, overall I'm quite happy with the piece now the very very last thing I want to do is get my green pencil once again and just add some uh, more shading so in areas kind of halfway between the ink and uh, and where it's blank I'm just gonna add some shading like this so usually in the darkest areas uh, I'll leave the very edges white uh, and I'm just going to speed up this process so I don't get too bored but basically it's just going to make it a little more hulkish and give it a little bit more of a finished off polished sort of look. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, the finished piece which is the Incredible Hulk. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a bit from it. As you can see at the end there, after I've, after I've gone through and added that extra layer of green shading, it means that the blank white bits kind of act as a highlight. So there are three dimensions to this picture, the pure black, the mid-tone green and then the highlight white. So I hope you enjoyed this Let's Draw video and it was requested by Ryan O'Kea. So this is to Ryan... O Ochia? Ochia? Something like that. And that is the Hulk. Thank you for joining me. And if you want to join the future live streams and get in your requests for future Let's Draw videos, uh, you can click the link in the description to join next week's Let's Draw Live. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you later.